Welcome to Growth for Good, the show about amplifying impact for nonprofits, charities, and social purpose businesses. I'm Daniel Francovilla, a marketing advisor and brand strategist and your host. On this show, I interview leaders at nonprofits and social enterprises and the organizations that support them. We discuss the wins, challenges, and best practices when it comes to communications, marketing, fundraising, and impact. Let's dive into today's episode. All right, so welcome to another episode of Growth for Good. Uh, Today, we are here with Carolyn. Welcome, Carolyn. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Thanks for uh, joining us uh, remotely. Where are you today? Um, I'm actually in Winnipeg, which is uh, Treaty 1 territory. It's the home of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, Dene people, as well as uh, homeland of the Métis Nation. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining us. So uh, we're going to start off with you giving a little bit of an elevator pitch um, to uh, the organization that you're with. Uh, Certainly. So um, my name is Carolyn Taubensey. I am Executive Director of Marketing and Communications at APTN, uh, which is a a television network. And uh, APTN um, has been around for over 23 years. And it's the world's first national Indigenous television broadcaster. Um, So, uh, and obviously, as I mentioned, that's across the world. So we're quite proud of what we've been able to achieve in terms of broadcasting to audiences from coast to coast to coast. Um, We provide... Yeah, thank you. We provide, um, we produce, uh, have programs that are commissioned that we produce as well as we acquire uh, content that is by, for, and about Indigenous peoples. And uh, basically building the capacity in terms of uh, providing the platform for storytellers to tell their stories from a wide uh, a range of, uh, wide range of genres. Incredible. So I'd love to know a little bit about how you uh, ended up uh, in the role that you're currently in at uh, APTN. Sure. I I have been in the uh, marketing and communications industry uh, for 30 plus years and uh, started with university at uh, the University of Manitoba and got my business degree. And uh, I started in the ad advertising agency. Um, One of the preeminent uh, agencies uh, back in the 90s was Palmer Jarvis Communications. Uh, I was a media buyer, planner, uh, and ended up as a media director director there. Um, And then I went client side. So I've had a host of uh, always in marketing communications, um, but from telecom to gambling. And then I really feel like I've come back full circle uh, in terms of uh, media industry and uh, I'm now working on the broadcast side of things. So it's kind of a full circle. Amazing. Yeah, it is. It's great how things kind of come together and evolve um, over the course of uh, your career. Um, And I'm sure a lot of things, as they do in in marketing and advertising, have uh, continued to evolve um, since then as well. Um, Now, obviously, a lot of people work in uh, organizations in the nonprofit sector um, because, you know, you're passionate, right, about what you do or about some causes or initiatives. I'd love to know um, what's what is one of those things that you're passionate about? Well, as a senior leader, I find that um, my role is much more about uh, working with the team and the people. And I have a a group of of staff that are specialists in um, campaigns, uh, promotions in terms of uh, producers uh, of commercials uh, and communications PR um, uh, specialists as well. And really a big part of my role is is helping to build that capacity of that team and their uh, learning and experience. So I do a lot of mentoring um, with different team members as well and really giving them the platform to be uh, the best communicators that they can be 
uh, in the industry. And so to me, uh, yeah, very selfishly, I get to learn uh, all sorts of things that I haven't necessarily experienced in, in other positions in terms of working for an Indigenous led organization, which is mm -hmm. uh, amazing. But it really is about building that capacity of people. And, uh, and that's what I really enjoy in terms of, uh, of the work that I do. That's, that's great. Um, now, when it comes to um, APTN, obviously you're, you're an organization, but you're you know, a media uh, a company as well. So attention and viewership is definitely core to, to what you do. Um, I was just curious to know if you had any tips or advice for organizations on what they can do to stand out uh, in a very crowded online space. There's tons of content um, out there to compete with. Yeah, very much so. And I mean, you know, it the principles have always been the same. I've been in the industry for a long time, but the principles are always the same in terms of finding the audience and, and being able to deliver your message to them. And so whether that's traditional media like APTN as a broadcaster uh, or even the online and digital platforms that we use, it really is about connecting uh, people with your message and, and being able to sort of break through uh, with the creative that you have and, and communicate, you know, clearly uh, to fill a need, whatever that need happens to be. And so, um, you know, the way that I look at it is that multimedia has always been a very important part of, uh, of a media strategy. And so, to not look at just sort of one thing being able to deliver your message. You can always expand your reach the more mm -hmm. that you, different aspects of media that you're in. And so looking whether that's uh, online and digital campaigns or traditional, trying to be able to do a variety of things that you can reach people uh, where and when they're, you know, ready to hear the messages. And then also really considering editorial environment. I mean, I think, um, you know, the things that we're hearing about certain uh, social media platforms and where they're going, I mean, I think you always have to also not only follow the audience, but also follow the editorial environment that you're in. Right. And is that a fit with your brand? So there's so many aspects that you need to look at. But it really is sort of trying to think about your audience or your consumer and where they are and in what environment or headspace they're in to receive your messages. So trying right. that's an age old thing in terms of marketing. But it just is there's new media to to, uh, you know, to consider and, and how you find that fit. Right. There's more places and platforms for, for that to take place. But ultimately, yes, it's about about reaching people where they're at, right? Absolutely, yeah. Um, amazing. So, uh, Carolyn, over the course of your career, you've obviously developed a lot of uh, connections. You've been in different industries. You've had, you know, you, you have a personal brand, right? Whether or not um, people like to say uh, that they have a personal brand, it exists. Um, and so uh, I know we've, we first got connected through the Non-for-Profit Council through the Canadian Marketing Association, which is another great, um, you know, way of, uh, or another great organization to be associated with. So what would you say that um, your own personal, the role of your own personal brand has played when it comes to your uh, success in the sector? Um, you know, again, it kind of comes back to sort of an earlier comment about, uh, you know, working with, with uh, teams of people. And uh, really, I would say from, from my own personal brand, it really is about, um, uh, you know, being a supporter, being a teacher, providing information uh, to make people, uh, you know, better at what they do in terms of, of their work and, and building their skill set. Um, and also really uh, just looking at um, opportunities, you know, for their own personal growth, but then how that all feeds back into, um, you know, uh, capacity building for the brands that you happen to be working for. And so I really find that, you um, 
to me, that's what I try to, I nurture and, uh, and teach and share. And I learn myself and, and I take, you know, the lessons that others teach me and, uh, and pour that back into really helping um, our, our team members um, in terms of their careers and their growth. Amazing. Um, so it's kind of this cycle, right, of uh, continuing to support each other. Love that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Now, um, of course, in, in the nonprofit space, it's so important to celebrate our success and showcase our impact. Um, I know that uh, APTN has kind of been serving for over two decades, um, you know, and, and you kind of have a, a very uh, distinct mission about, you know, celebrating our cultures, inspiring uh, the future generations and, and honoring wisdom of the elders. So I'd love to know what are one or two uh, recent uh, wins or successes that uh, that you could share? Um, you, you know, we we definitely have a cycle in terms of uh, of seasons and schedules and programs, and and it basically is you know you're definitely sort of continuing. You know, as soon as you finish one project, you're on to the next, and, <laughs> and you got to yeah. keep going. But a, a big part of it is, uh, in terms of success, I would say is is partnership and and working, especially in the um, not for profit sector, and how this can extend to others, uh, not necessarily uh, in the broadcasting industry like I'm in, but in terms of um, finding partnerships where you can collaborate and work together. So one such example, um, this uh, past September, uh, September thirtieth which is National Day uh, for Truth and Reconciliation. And it was a federal holiday, uh, basically just back in uh, 2021 for the first time. So this was the sort of the second year of, uh, of National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. And we actually partnered with the National Center for Truth and Reconciliation, which is located here in Winnipeg. And, and that uh, came out of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And uh, they have... Basically, that is an organization that is uh, storing the stories of uh, survivors from uh, Indian residential schools. And Mm -hmm. so we really wanted to uh, work with them in partnership. And we produced a commemorative gathering that was held live in Ottawa in September. And um, basically to, to recognize with all Canadians in terms of the... Um, the trauma, the hardships that we have as our history as a country, um, and basically, um, you know, provide those opportunities to tell those stories and and provide the truth so that we can move forward in reconciliation. So um, that's a, a really important um you know, uh, endeavor for, for all of us as, uh, as citizens here in the country. And so working in partnership with organizations like the National Center for Truth and Reconciliation just helped us in terms of provide meaningful programming and certainly an opportunity to pause and, uh, and reflect. Um, so that was one example uh, that we have in terms of how you work with partnerships um, that's incredible. I was just going to say, I, I, you know, I think it's really important to bring more attention. As you mentioned, it's only something that's been uh, given greater attention the last couple of years. Um, and, and I spoke a lot this year about how a lot of brands were getting involved and, you know, which ones were actually making meaningful contributions and, and ultimately raising more uh, awareness, which is what we need uh, all across the country. Yes, very much so. And so while September might be about commemoration, the other bookend to it uh, is um, in June. It's the National Indigenous Peoples Day, um, mm-hmm. not a stat holiday uh, for for the country, but still on the summer solstice, it's an important part for us to sort of take that day 
and celebrate uh, Indigenous cultures uh, and all the wonderful um, uh, contributions that they make in terms of music and poetry and um, and all sorts of talents that are there. So it's much, much more of a celebratory aspect. And, and when we're looking at partnerships uh, and, uh, again, how we can help grow, um, APTN has uh, been doing Indigenous Day Live. Uh, we're going to be heading into our seventh 17th year actually and um, we uh, you know look at partners in terms of other um, uh, organizations and corporations to support us Uh, Canadian Heritage has been been a big supporter of us in terms of of being able to hold that day of celebrations and and really uh, showcase um, all the different talents that Indigenous peoples have so that's again another way of doing part partnerships that helps us facilitate and, and communicate our message. Amazing. Yeah, I saw for uh, Indigenous Day Live, there was a whole kind of separate website as well where people can uh, engage and, and also you can stream some of the content from that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but just seeing some of the some of the partners, you know, it, it's great to see, I think, two of Canada's uh, big national banks sponsoring, for example. So you know, hopefully they can help to amplify um, and share that content out as well uh, for the work that you're doing. So that's great. Yeah, very much. Um, Thank you. When it comes to um, online platforms that have kind of, you know, worked well uh, for you and and the organization uh, uh, at APTN, um, where where is APTN most active and and, uh, what would you say, you know, the platforms that are working best for you? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, being a, a traditional television um, network, I mean, I'm sure you can appreciate and your audience can appreciate the fact that we tend to cater to older uh, people. So I'm going to say 35 plus is sort of mm-hmm. more of the core of watching traditional television. Um, and the older you get, the more um, inherent people have their TV subscriptions and, and are watching television. Um, and so what we use in terms of uh, the platforms that are reaching those audiences, um, you know, certainly Facebook is uh, is a big uh, platform for us, as as well as Instagram. Um, and then where we've moved, and because of audiences and behaviors and changing in terms of broadcast, we have a streaming service um, that yes. we launched in 2019 called APTN Me. Yeah, yeah, I checked and it out. Yeah. And and that's a subscription video on demand service. So it doesn't have advertising as part of uh, it. It's all subscription based. But in terms of audiences that are younger and uh, I'll say the under 35 in terms of, of reaching them, how they view videos and an environment there, that's really where our uh, focus is for the growth of, of our Lumi platform. And then we're trialing different uh, online platforms all the time. So whether or not we're using Snapchat or TikTok or finding ways to reach, again, the audience where they are, um, yeah. we'll always try to um, experiment and see what's working. So we'll always give ourselves a little bit of that budget allowance to to try things, see what works, and then just keep improving on it in terms of whether it's um, uh, you know targeting and finding um, you know people with our interests in our program and those sorts of things, and just really refining our marketing campaigns as we go. Amazing. Yeah. And, and I guess as a you know TV network, you have a lot of content to work with that, that exists. You don't have a, the challenge of creating too much content just for social, right? But, uh, but um, do you find that a lot of um, viewers are able to discover content from social and then kind of move over to the online platform or to uh, TV to tune in? Yeah, as part of as part of my department uh, and our focus of what we're to do, trying to do is really about discovery of programs. So, uh, on one aspect in terms of looking at um, you know the platform where people watch TV and giving them that opportunity, whether it's through our on-air promotions. Uh, or U.S. Ad Avails um, or Connected TV, those sorts of things. They're watching TV, and so you, we can deliver uh, our marketing message in terms of discovery that way. But then very much uh, 
um, supplementing that uh, with digital and, and online platforms in terms of, of sharing information of what our shows are and, uh, and reaching different audiences. For example, um, we, for a, a couple of years, and we're going to be uh, launching it uh, again, if I can say that, without it, okay. the announcements coming out in about a week, uh, but yep. Hockey Night in Canada and Cree. And, and so, you know, you have a sports oriented audience. So looking at social media platforms based on uh, some of the key aspects of, of programs, whether that's sports, whether that's indigenous languages, whether that's uh, people interested in, um, you know, drama types of shows or variety shows, those sorts of things, you can use digital platforms in such a way that are interest based that really help to say, hey, there is this show here and you might enjoy it and be entertained or informed or educated. That's amazing. Yeah, there's such a wide kind of range of, uh, of content and benefits there. Mm-hmm. Um, so kind of stepping back, looking at uh, uh, your career and your role, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure that you've learned and adapted along the way. Are there any um, principles or best practices that you could share when it comes to marketing and communications um, to other organizations? Um, Well, um, (laughs) this is one of those questions. Uh, You could go go anywhere with it, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I think, again, it comes back to best practices in terms of of where are you going to reach audiences with your messages and knowing that there's always an evolution of change in terms of how people are consuming, where they get information. And so, for example, we've talked about traditional media, we've talked about uh, online platforms, but even just looking at the changing industry uh, in terms of of, you know, even where the Netflix are going, where it was no commercials, and now they're going to have an advertising Mm -hmm. model. So it's AVOD, advertising video on demand. And there's going to be opportunities to advertise in that platform. There are other uh, AVOD models that are going to be coming out that uh, as advertisers, we wouldn't have necessarily had access to because they were subscription-based models. And so we're going to be able to reach in new media in different ways. Um, Another um, uh, sort of delivery aspect of of content, video content that's coming up is called FAST and it's free advertising uh, supported television models. And so TV is evolving in itself. And so there are always going to be new and different media that is out there for advertisers to Um, utilize in terms of delivering their reach. And so I would say from a best practices perspective, it's always sort of of being aware of what's out there, how to adapt, how to change and how to evolve and, and uh, find your audiences for your, for your products and services. Amazing. I think that's a, that's a great kind of way to sum it up. Um, and, and some good advice to, to consider no matter what stage or what size, right, your organization is. Mm-hmm. Um, at uh, APTN, have you noticed um, a change or have your marketing efforts changed at all since the pandemic? I know that, uh, you know, you are a network, so it's not like you're doing a ton of uh, in-person programming and operations. But, of course, you still have to be able to produce the content. So uh, how have things changed um, since the pandemic? Yeah, you know, with the pandemic, of course, lots of people stayed at home and were watching, you know, TV or programs or those sorts of things. So we certainly benefited from the audiences um, that um, were were tuning in. Um, But uh, but like the rest of the industry, there were definitely challenges in terms of the production of uh, of programming content. But there were ways that our programming team uh, adapted in terms of, of format of programs and, and, and those sorts of things in terms of, of 
you know, how you could do remote or digital uh, mm -hmm. and, and different types of things. But it definitely slowed that whole production uh, process. Um, but we also looked at different models of delivering content so that we could adapt that way. But from a marketing perspective, um, you know, we were still really able to sort of keep everything going that our team always has been doing in terms of, of um, presenting programs for people to discover and watch on whichever platform that happened to be. So we didn't get affected nearly as much as some other industries, you know, let's say restaurants so that they were just shut down and there was no business to be had other than if they, you know, were able to, um, uh, pivot and and do right. you know delivery and those sorts of things. So for us, it didn't affect us as much in terms of what my marketing and communications team uh, was responsible for doing. We just kept things going, but at home. <laughs> at home, exactly. Yeah, that that's great. So, oh, just to wrap up here, um, I'd love to know. Uh, APTN has, of course, a number of different um, resources. Um, programming, you have your online platform, streaming uh, service. So what would you recommend if someone's looking to really engage um, and learn more about your content? Uh, you know, you're the first national Indigenous broadcaster in the world. Uh, where would you recommend people start if they're new to uh, APTN? Well, you know, the fact that uh, as part of the CRTC, we're a regulated uh, service and APTN is actually on everybody's basic TV subscription plan. So we're available to almost 10 million households across the country as part wow. of your basic service. And so really finding APTN on the schedule um, and uh, just, just discover a show. And um, obviously we have on our website uh, a description of all the different types of shows. So if there's something in terms of a genre that you're interested in, a documentary, uh, a comedy, um, you know, that certainly is a, is a good foray into, into the network. If you like cooking, there's, we have, you know, cooking shows, supernatural shows are super popular uh, with our audiences. And so we have a number of uh, supernatural shows as well. So um, really just tuning into the network and, and trying a show and uh, seeing um, if it's something that you're entertained or by or, um, or even informed, which is, uh, which is a great opportunity. And really being able to uh, provide those stories that are um, produced by Indigenous people and, and really their voices speak volumes in terms of, uh, of uh, the different stories that they have to tell and share. Exactly. Well, I do look forward to uh, engaging in some more of the content. Um, I, I do love the look and feel of the online platform. So I will check that out. Thank you so much, Carolyn, for spending some time talking to us about uh, what you do and uh, sharing some of your advice. Thanks so much, Daniel. I really appreciate being invited to be here with you today. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of Growth for Good. The show is presented by Daniel Does and produced by Creator Club in Toronto. You can find notes, links, and more about my guests at danieldoes.co, where you can also learn about ways we can collaborate. Feel free to connect with me anytime on LinkedIn or Twitter. If there is someone from the sector that you'd like to learn from or you'd like to be interviewed on the show, feel free to reach out to team at danieldoes.co. If you're considering creating a podcast or video series for your organization, connect with Creator Club at creatorclubstudios.com.